Welcome back to the Social Work Race podcast. I have to clear my throat now, <clears throat> as I'm always doing. Um, guys, we have Eddie here, Eddie Hippolyte, a friend of mine. Um, I've said it earlier, a mentor and a friend. I'm watching him from a distance and um, it's been an interesting journey between us. Um, Absolutely. You know, um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a second, but I just want you all to know that this platform, as you know, is was originally designed for social work students and newly qualified social workers. Why? Because that's who I once was. So I don't want to forget um, where I've come from. And I'm here for that, for that purpose, to get everyone else on the journey, hitting the road, uh, hitting the ground uh, more efficient than when those like myself and those before us had hit the ground. We want to be more informed about how to practice better, learn and grow. <clears throat> so thank you for joining us on this platform. And again, like I said, I'm joined by Eddie Hippolyte. Uh, Eddie, introduce yourself because I'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here to talk, ain't we? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Eddie Hippolai. Uh, I'm a Londoner, London born and bred. Um, grew up in West London, Fulham SW6 to be precise. Come on. Uh, I, I currently live in, in Australia. I've been living in New South Wales for the past 11 years. Um, vocationally, I am trained as a pastor. That was my um, academic training. And I worked as a minister for 18 years actually in London and here in Australia for the final five years of, of my journey with, with pastoral ministry. I've always been an educational consultant. I was actually an educational consultant before I became a pastor and before I became a, a minister and went to train for ministry. Um, I was a residential social worker. So I've always, my, my work has always been my life has always been around some type of social engagement before all of that I used to be a youth worker in the youth clubs coming up um, when I was younger um, working Saturday schools and helping out in, in Saturday school so my life has always been around social engagement and, and cultural engagement currently um, I run a consultancy um, and my consultancy helps I, I say I, I I call it helping stuck people unstick themselves um, you've probably heard me say that enough times already mm. Kurt um, it, it works but I, I work <laughs> I work in the area of resilience and um and creating just resilient um cultures and cons resilient leadership using narrative um I specialize yep. in helping people look over their narratives and 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 look at their own journey so currently, um, with all of that, I, I, I am doing my research. Um, um, I'm doing my doctoral research with the University of South Australia. And I'm part of, I'm one of um, a group of four researchers who are researching belonging. Um, all four of us are from across the African diaspora. Um, me, London, Caribbean, Grenada. Um, my family's from Grenada. Um, Helen is one of the researchers. She's from Kenya. Simon, um, he's from South Sudan. And Cass, um, Cass is from Cameroon. And so we're researching how we enhance um, belonging for African diaspora students in the education system. The African community is the newest community, um, the newest migrant community into Africa. I mean, into Australia. Yep. Um, and so we're researching the experience of, of, of Black children coming through the education system. My personal research as a part of that, um, my specific research as a part of the overall research is I am looking at the role of teachers in creating racially inclusive secondary schools. So um, I'm journeying with how teachers understand their own cultural identity development, how they um, think about their um, racial literacy mm. um, and how they think about racial understanding. I'm yeah. taking that journey with teachers 
Um, because the one thing that you do understand as a, and you probably understand it uh, within social work as well, um, going into schools, uh, one thing that I've, uh, is clear when you're in schools as a educational consultant, as a teacher, children have no power in schools. They have no power over the school environment. They do not create culture. They only respond to culture. They go into schools with an established culture. And so there ain't no point in asking students how you create um, racially inclusive school schools in environments where they have no power to create that. So the power is with the teachers and therefore the responsibility is with the teachers and the leadership um, of those schools. So that is the focus of my research. And that's going to be the focus of of the questions that um, I ask and and the journey that I hope teachers are will be willing to take with me. So well, that's interesting because where you were you in your research, you and I are PhD candidates as we as we speak. Mm. Um, I think we started at the same time. I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. started last year. No, yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And 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 for me. You're I had full a time. You're full time. I'm part time. I'm part time. Oh. You might finish before me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm full. I'm full time. Yeah, <clears throat> my my funding runs out 2026. So, brother, it's got, it's got to be done. <laughs> it's got to be done. Um, I'm part time. As get said, hop in and hop out. You know, what I mean? <laughs> as long as you get what you what you went in for. Hey, listen, listen, listen. So, I I I I am um, had an experience. I haven't told anyone. Mm -hmm. apart from you and I thought you know something um this has been brewing for a while with me um I've been fortunate enough as a social worker to work in London at somewhat out of London and right out the other right on the coast on the southeast coast southwest coast and it's they're all different worlds mm -hmm. and I'm, I had to ask myself the question, and here is the title of today's session, right? It's diversity, inclusion, and delusion. Mm -hmm. And we're looking more at the black social worker, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is their experience and journey and how we're gonna, how, I wanna look at how we understand how they may be processing mm. that from your perspective eddie um i want to i'm, I'm going to give a little context to the to the title um am i experiencing racism did i experience racism in that incident or is it me is it my imagination? So I want to delve into the experiences of minority professionals who often question whether they are encountering racism, how they process it, is it imagined? And I know, as usual, discussions like this will have to be a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> so let me just throw some stats at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as, and these stats come from most of them come from community care who've, who, who have already done their research. A survey of nearly 2000 social workers in England found that one third experienced racism. Is it in their head is the question. Experienced racism from colleagues or managers over a 12 month period. 31% mm -hmm. um, of black social workers and 28% of Asian respondents reported facing racism at least five times in the previous year. 10% mm -hmm. uh, said that their career progression was limited due to racism. Mm -hmm. and this may highlight systemic racism. Mm -hmm. um, now, the question of is it in my head? Mm -hmm. When I'm surrounded by people who are adamant that they love all peoples. 
before we go into it, I want you to define racism mm -hmm. and then let's then define systemic racism. Yeah. Well, racism as um, racism as a construct does not exist without um, the idea of race. Yeah, race doesn't come, ra racism doesn't come before race. Racism comes as a result of the idea of race. Mm. You know what I mean? And, you know, I mean, simply put in my layman's term, um, race, the construct of race, which is a social construct. Um, um, and, and, and it's a social story. Let me start to use the word construct. Um, race is a social story. Race is the story that somebody made up that there are fundamental um, physiological um, and biological differences uh, between all races that separate um, that separate us in terms of uh, a hierarchy of difference and um, and a hierarchy um, of superiority. Yeah. So race, you know, and that was that that was created by pseudoscience and and pseudo anthropology, which is which is a science. Science and anthropology created the idea that there is this idea of race, uh, the difference, be, the difference between this and this. Yeah, you know, um, and it was created. Actually, it came out of the Enlightenment. It came out of modernity. Um, human beings, who we were, what it what it meant to be fully human historically was defined by the church. It was defined by the church and, and the church defined everybody who was, and I'm, I'm breaking this down to it's just most simple. Yeah. The, the, the Western church defined the Christian church defined everybody as human, um, fully human as those who were Christian, those who weren't Christians, they were barbarians. Yeah, they were they they were just barbarians, and so the papal bulls, you know, um, and um, the papal bulls that went out in the the thirteen in the thirteen hundreds and the fourteen hundreds, basically said, go into all the world and make the Saracen, which was the um, <laughs> which was the the Muslim, you know what I mean, make the Saracen and whoever else, all the pagans. Make them slaves if you know if they do not accept Christ. Keep them in perpetual slavery, because they are not fully human. You know what happened was Western Europe broke away from the church, from the the church's grip on on everything, on education, on science, the way the world was seen, everything. Yeah, you know you had that this enlightenment, and out of the enlightenment came modernity, and modernity decided that we are going to define what it means to be human, but we are defining it scientifically, you know? And in this scientific um, definition of what it means to be human, they created a vertical hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah, they created a vertical hierarchy. So they came up with the idea of race within this, I, this vertical hierarchy in which they placed themselves at the top, yeah. you know? Western Western Europe, and they, you know, uh, and uh, Europe, yeah, Western um, Europe, and and they placed Africa at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, Western Europe at the top, Africa at the bottom, and then they just created a hierarchy of every other shade and every other culture and every other eth ethnicity in between those two hierarchies yeah. to be them was to be fully human to be us was to be subhuman yeah. yeah and the reason why it was originally created the idea of race the idea of race had to be created in order to justify yeah. um the direction that europe was now taking and the direction that europe was taking was imperial expansion you know you go back and you look at 
during the time of, you know, let's look at British history. Go back and look at to the time of the Elizabethans. Mm. Yeah. Go before that. Go look at the time of Shakespeare. Mm. Um, there was just open, there was open that the, the idea of race hadn't been created then. Yeah. The idea of race, the I, you know, race hadn't been created then. It was just different people from different ethnicities, different cultures, different countries. Yeah. But what happened was as Europe begins to expand outside of itself, it's now looking around the world and it's, you know, because it, around about that time, you know, you look to Spain, Spain is run by who? Spain is run by who? It's run by the Moors. Mm. You know, when, when, when Shakespeare writes Othello, you know what I mean? And he's talking about Othello, you know, and he's talking about the Moor. He's talking about a black African. Yeah. That's who he's talking about. The Moors were the ones that ran Northern Spain, you know, and, and they governed in Northern Spain for hundreds of years, mm. brought them science, brought them, you know, they, they, they were Muslim, you know, they was Islamic, but they brought them um, um, science, brought them literature, brought them, you know, everything, everything, you know. So what is happening is that Europe now is beginning to understand, all right, we got to come outside of ourselves and we we're expanding we're expanding imperial you know imperial imperialistically and they're they're moving around the world and they're thinking to themselves all right how we have to change our posture towards these group of people who we've always seen as as our equals and how do they do that well they create the idea of race mm. you know and i'm simplifying it and you know, people will argue with the simplification, but when you read the history, it's this is it, you know. And they've come up with this classification. Why? Because they have to justify now what would eventually be the enslavement, the enslavement of these African people, the enslavement of these African bodies, yeah. you know, and the uh, imperial, um, uh, the imperial stealing of the planet that's what europe did they used they you know the idea of race was first created in um um uh in europe yeah. it was western europe that sold the idea of waste um race to western europeans yeah outside the rest of the planet everybody no we're not thinking of you in terms of that white black like what is that no no what is that you know mm -hmm. so you come up with the you come up with the idea of race yeah well how do you maintain the idea of race well you have to build a you have to build a construct of racism <laughs> and racism are all the lies you have to create in order to justify that this is fundamentally different from that yeah. So race is the story that we tell about the value of somebody's humanity. Yeah. Racism are the lies we continue to tell in order to disenfranchise their humanity and, and to dehumanize their humanity. That's what racism is. They're, race and racism, they're, they're two specific lies linked to each other. But you can't have racism if you don't have race. You take out race. And th this is the deep thing. This is the deep thing when it comes to Western Europe. Yeah, this is the deep thing when it comes to West Western Europe. Modernity defined our humanity, defined the humanity of everybody outside of Western Europe. That's why the West was able to go everywhere, conquer and colonize. And every Western country has been involved in colonization in one form or another, whether they physically colonized or whether, you know, like the Scandinavian countries are like, oh, no, 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 well, we never, well, some of you did. And the rest of you financially benefited from it. So yeah, it, it's a Western Europe, it's a Western thing. It's a hmm. Western thing, you know what I mean? So am I am I perpetuating racism as a, even as a black man by calling myself black? Well, black is a we we have to figure out who we are within the within the social construct because the social construct isn't going nowhere. At least with black, 
we had a bit more we had a bit more agency in defining ourselves as black you know what i mean at least we had a you know negro colored octoroon mulatto half caste you know wog those are all the term those those are all um terms that were just basically heaped upon us you know at least when it came to the idea of just being black we had a bit more we had a bit more um had a bit more agency yeah you know had a bit more agency in at least in self-defining at least in self-defining you know but this is the deep thing i was saying mm. when it comes to modernity modernity defined everybody's humanity yeah western europe through modernity and the enlightenment defined everybody's humanity on this scale yeah that scale has never gone away here we go that scale has never gone away that scale and that idea of the way in which you think about somebody's humanity is baked into just the western approach to the rest of the world because remember that at the heart of the western approach to what it means to be fully human is to center the white body at the center of what it means to be human you know what i mean and for white people whiteness is created the, the idea of whiteness is created you know what i mean for those of us outside of that construct we play as it were the proximity to whiteness games you know we play the proximity to whiteness so the argument will be made the argument will be made where you've got the new prime minister um you've got you know um cruella cruella braverman you know what i mean you've got pity Pat, you know you know um petty patel you know what i mean and and i and i should be a lot more respectful with their names but <laughs> I'm struggling right now. Okay, uh, it's deep. Uh, I'm struggling. Got, um, right what's her name? They um, play. We've got someone else now. We've got a black. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The head of um um yeah um yeah. Badock. Thank you. Yeah, Badenoch, Yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, Badenoch. Mm -hmm. You know, the argument is made that they play the proximity to whiteness game, and in the proximity to whiteness game is the devaluing of every other thing when it comes to color, when it comes to ethnicity, it's the leaving of yours in order to be close to that, because that still stays at the center. That still stays at the center, that has to be protected, you know? So when we think about the idea of race and we think about the idea of racism, because the construct, you know, um, I mean, and there's different types of racism, yeah. There's different types of way in which ways in which racism manifests itself you know but the center of the manifestation of racism is just simply the centering of whiteness it's just the centering of whiteness and when i mean the centering of whiteness i just mean like a white way of seeing the world white comfortability within the world you know what i mean a lack of white discomfort within the world you know <laughs> The idea that white is privileged within the world, you know, the, the fact that whites don't have to explain themselves as much as everybody else when they walk into a room and ask, why are you here? There's just the assumption like, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. Like, you know, like, like we do it as British, even as black people, you know, we do it as, you know, we go across, we go abroad and like, bro, I don't know one speak English here. <laughs> We're in, a, we're in another country, but the French will do the same. Europeans will do the same. Doesn't doesn't anybody speak my language here? Or you have to speak a European language in order you, to, to to function within a space. You know, you know what's interesting? You say that you know when th this is hardwired into it, it is me. Literally hardwired. It, it, so in terms of the way you tell stories now. The way in which you tell stories, tell stories about history is hardwired in. The ways in which you tell stories about culture 
it's hardwired in. Well, well, the way well, in which well, you tell stories about identity, it's hardwired in. Where I'm coming from as well is it's hardwired. When you said, like, when you walk into a room, do I belong? Mm -hmm. There are cultures or ethnicities rather that do not have to, do not think like that. I know. No. But I know that I do. Well, you, you I did. Have to. I did. Have to. But yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, uh, there, is a, there has been a, a significant shift over the years in my behavior mm -hmm. with that level of consciousness. Why am mm -hmm. I asking myself these questions? And here we are, this all plays into the definition of racism. And then now, here we go, systemic racism. Mm -hmm. so, so I walk into a room and, and why would I even ask myself the question, how do they see me? Well, this is this is the question. The, 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 this is the reason why. Because racism as a construct, remember I said racism as, as a construct is all the lies that you tell in order to 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 um uh, in order to affirm and in order to um support the idea that this is somehow superior to this that this in any of its sh shades is inferior to this you know so racism are all the ways in which you create a world in which you question you question and r racism in in society almost operates like the matrix <laughs> Mm -hmm. The matrix, you don't know the matrix exists until mm -hmm. you plug out of the matrix. Okay. Racism is not constructed for white people to see it. That sounds like gaslighting. That, 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 that sounds like gaslighting. It, no, it's not gaslighting. It's just an actual fact. Racism is not constructed for white people to see it. It's not constructed for white people to see it. It is, it is constructed in such a way that it, it's, it's constructed for white people to experience the privilege that it affords their life. And when I say privilege, it's not a privilege of wealth. For some it is. It's, it's not a privilege of class. For mm -hmm. some it is, mm -hmm. you know. But it's a privilege of being able to move in the world without any restrictions and just believing that you are supposed to be here because you're here, you know? So the difference being, you know, and I've had the experience of walking into a building dressed to the nines, you know, with a white colleague and a white friend who is just dressed as casually as me. And they've walked into the building and security have asked, can I help you? Only to me. Yeah. Yeah. What, what racism does, you know, and the privilege of it, what it does, it assumes for that white person their place and it assumes for me my place. Can I, let me throw something at you, please. Yeah. This, here's some facts from studies and mm -hmm. articles, and I'm taking most of them from community care. Disciplinary action and fitness to practice referrals. Minority staff were 40%. This is in social services now. Were 40% more likely to enter formal disciplinary, disciplinary processes. Twice as likely for fitness to practice processes. Mm -hmm. uh, career progression, 10% of respondents said their career progression is limited because of what they say is racism. Mm -hmm. uh, minority ethnic staff were half as likely to be appointed a job from shortlisting compared to mm -hmm. white staff. Mm -hmm. Black social workers were reported being overloaded and then criticized for underperforming. Yeah. And they face increased scrutiny and negative assumptions about their skills. Um, they face overt racial abuse and discrimination. Um, this comes from both families that they work with and their colleagues. 
Um, now, why is why is that for all? Let's go. This is it. Because remember, yeah, I, I wanted to I wanted to look at the systemic yeah. Yeah, element, yeah. but yeah, go ahead. And why is it? Because it's a question of assumption. Assumption. And, I, and I'll go back, and I, I know it sounds long, but I'll go back and I'll say it again. Modernity defined for Western Europe the way they see non-white West, non, the non-white rest of the world. Modernity has already done that. Yeah. And the Western world has not changed it, even though it was based on pseudoscience. Even though it was based on pseudoscience, even though it was based on just, you know, just an imperialistic and 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 um colonial lie in order to justify the stealing of land and the stealing of um wealth and and the controlling of resources. Because at the heart of it, that's that's the reason why race and racism exists. Those with power had to figure out a way who's gonna be our bouncer. You know what I mean? And they're like, all right, then race and racism. You know what I mean? Um for them, the non-white world, and then for the white world, class and classism. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and where the two of them cross cross paths, we'll just argue, we'll, we'll just set the up, we'll, we'll set them to divide amongst themselves throughout the classes. You know what I mean? But this idea, this overhanging idea of race and the difference between me and you and the assumptions between me and you is already baked in. Yeah. And so it will it will come down. It will come down. It comes down through education. I'm studying, I'm I'm researching in 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 um here in Australia. Yeah. Let's use Australia as an example. And you've read me stats from um you've read me stats from from England. Yeah. And I could literally read you the same stats from Australia when it comes to the Aboriginal community, when it comes to um, the um, African diasporic community. I can read you the same stats. Yeah, I can read you the same stats. So let's let's think about the ways in which these these stories are told. Um, think about the ways in which these stories are told, and the way in which they affect how how um, students in the schooling system experience uh ex experience racialization you know teachers will already say the, the the data bears out and teachers say we are not trained enough we have not been brought up in areas in which we've lived around different ethnic minorities you know what i mean especially black african diasporic communities you know teachers will say that within their training there is already a bent that moves towards more of assimilation rather than acculturation and, and multiculturalism, you know? Um, and so it's expected. My daughter went to an all white school. My daughter went to an all white Christian school. And the, only, the only black, only- uh... no, no, well, well, when, when she was in primary school, she was like literally, probably one of two, two black people, you know? And I'm talking about in the primary school, the primary school was about nine, nine, 900, you know what I mean? Got into secondary and stayed in the same school, went up to secondary and yeah, I think black people started coming in to her school when she got to around about year nine, around, around about year 10, yeah. So the friends that, the, the people of color that she, um, connected with the South Pacific Islanders, you know what I mean? Those from Samoa, those from Tonga, those from Fiji, the, you know, because obviously we're in the South Pacific. And she never used to tell me at school, it's only now that she's left and I'm doing this research that she begins to tell me. Um, they would get in trouble in class, like five kids, you know what I mean? You know, three of them, Three of them, her, the black kid, um, two Pacific Islanders, you know what I mean? Two white kids. Yeah. All of them would get in trouble for literally doing the same thing. Literally doing the same thing. Yeah. And um, all of them would end up on report card. 
you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, beat them all, bop, 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 as it were. Punish them all equally, yeah. That is until the two white kids came off of um, report card after one week. And then the rest of the kids, you know, the black kid and the two Pacific Islander kids, they stayed on report card for an extra three weeks. Yeah. All of them for the same infraction. Yeah. All of them for the same infraction. Sounds like and, me. <laughs> and she Sounds said, like me. she said that happened all the way through school. It was always the case. Yeah. You know, she saw the disparity in punishment. She saw the disparity in assumptions. You know what I mean? My, my friend, my friend, uh, my best friend, um, I won't name him because um, I don't want to put him on blast. Uh, but he works within council and he is headhunted. He is a brilliant, brilliant man. He is headhunted for the work that he does within councils. You know, and he runs his own business and, you know, these agencies, they put his name out there and councils are like, yes, me, you know, and he'll go and he'll, he does brilliant, turns them around. He was saying there's a guy that he's worked with for years through his business. And he said, we was talking about this whole idea of what we experience professionally within the workplace, which kind of goes in, in, in line with what we're talking about here. And he said, you know, I was talking with him about um, building and um, just, just this specific conversation about the, tech, um, about the technicality of approaching this particular um, type of work and the way in which it's done. And the guy had said something, you know, the guy had said something um, or, you know, offered an idea or a way of doing it that he thought, well, well, you know, most people say that this is the way you do it, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, no, actually, this is the way in which it's looked at the way in which it's been professionally looked at, the way it's been historically looked at. And this is the best approach towards it. He said, Ed, when I said it, he said he was shocked that I would have known the answer. And he said, Ed, this is a person that I've worked with for years. We've done business, like thousands of pounds worth of business over the years. But the fact that I knew the answer, he said, Ed, he couldn't get over it. He said he couldn't get over it. It's just <laughs> to the point where he started to become uncomfortable. Like he said, cause I'm thinking to myself, well, why would you assume that I didn't know that? And that is the way in which racism works systemically. It makes assumptions about your humanity, about your intelligence, about your professionalism. It makes, because those assumptions have already been made. They're made, they're, they're made through, they're, they're made through, they're baked into, as I said, education. They're based into, they're baked into the media. They're baked into the way in which stories are told about people. They're baked into the way in which, you know, somebody's um somebody's infractions somebody's misbehavior somebody's professionalism it's baked into the way you are seen you are seen because what racism does is it 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 really it actually dehumanizes it dehumanizes and it's not constructed in a way it's not constructed in any way for white people to understand it until they understand the way their worlds have been socially and racially, their worlds have been socially and racially constructed. So when we say, did, I, did that just happen to me or is it all in my head? No, it's not all in your head. It just happened. But they don't understand the way their world, the way in which their world is constructed. You know, um, um, Charles Mills, in the book, The Racial Contract, Charles Mill said, he said, he said, racism is so complex. <laughs> he said, racism is so complex as a construct 
that not even white people fully understand it. Because it's not for theirs to understand. What we do is we feel it. So we feel the slight. We feel the microaggression. We feel when a white person meets a black person and they try to create some type of bond or some type of, you know, relational bond, but they use race as, a, you know, they use a microaggression, you know, they use a microaggression absentmindedly, you know, as a way of, you know, making a joke in, in a way that can bond the two of us, you know, they'll, they'll use it. Um, they'll, 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 they'll think about the way in which they make assumptions of a child's intelligence. And I've, I've, I've had it, you know, well, you know, my story, I was declared, um, um, uneducatable in the third year of, of, of secondary school. I went to Holland Park. I was declared uneducatable. You know, I'm not going to lie. I did used to get into trouble a lot in school and, and I was a restless kid. I wasn't a bad kid. I was just restless. You know, um, I sat in front of an educational psychologist who said to my mom, Mrs. Hipper, like the problem with Eddie is that he's just uneducatable. You know, I lasted six weeks of year of, of the third year. You know what I mean? And then I was expelled from school, ended up in a community home school, I ended up in a community home school. And I ended up in the workshop of engineering workshop of Cliff German. And he was the first one. I've always said there are four, four teachers that have had profound effects on me as, as an individual. He was the first one. He, in that engineering workshop, he understood my capacity to absorb information, understand it and give it back, you know? But he was part of an education system. He, he, he was at a time within an education system that was not constructed in order to, um, that was not constructed in order to educate. It was just constructed back then for us. You know, it, it, it wasn't constructed in, in a way to actually um, empower, empower black children, especially those of us first generation from, from, from the Windrush generation. So yeah, go on. I was, I was just gonna ask, you defined racism and you defined mm -hmm. race. Yeah. And, that, and you, you gave a longer version of systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And I want you to concise it into a, a statement. Make it concise. Right, race, race is the lie we tell about the humanity of 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 another person um of 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 a non-white person yeah. racism yeah um racism are all the lies that we have to tell in order to um justify the idea of race right yeah and systemic racism is the way we bake it into everything <laughs> systemic racism is glitter yeah. yeah, systemic racism is how we get it everywhere, right. just everywhere. So everything is touched by it on greater or lesser levels. But this, this, is in, this is interesting because what it means, it means that we have to do something uh, radical mm -hmm. to understand and make changes because simply by... Um, sitting next to you at work, having conversations and never using the N-word would deem me technically as not racist. However, you're saying that actually there's a system that you haven't even, probably you haven't even understood yourself. A set of structures that are in place that maintain something. And I'm talking to the professional environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you say we, who is the we? Firstly, white people. Hmm. Firstly, white people, but also myself. First, we. Because we experience it all the time. We just don't understand why we're experiencing it all the time. White people are living at the center of the privilege of it all the time. But they don't understand how that privilege operates. They are the ones who are, they, they are the first we. They are the first we. Because remember, racism is not a black problem. 
systemic racism is not a black problem. It's not a black problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a black problem in that we bear the brunt of experiencing it, but it's not a black. It's not a black problem to solve. We cannot solve it because we are not the ones who are being privileged by it. We're not the ones who will sit at the center of the privilege of it. We're not the ones that it has been shaped to privilege. We are the ones that it has been, we are not the ones that it has been constructed to privilege. We are the ones that it has been constructed to dehumanize. So it's not our problem to solve. It cannot be solved until white people care enough about the way in which their world is structured in order to sit down and honestly look at their world. Look at the way their world operates. You know what I mean? Because you won't, you won't, you know, <laughs> you won't, you won't turn around and use the N-word, you know, in white company. Even in white company, you won't turn around and use the N-word. You know what I mean? But somebody over there tells a racist joke. You're going to pull them up? You're going to say, hey, what are you doing? No, 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 no. That ain't even funny. What are you, a failed comedian? You ain't going to do that. You're going to be like, oh, man, that was so out of order. That was so out of order, wasn't it? Yeah, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're going to be non-racist, but you ain't going to be anti-racist. The anti-racist is like, oi, oi, what are you doing? No, 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 that ain't even funny. The non-racist will be like, gosh, that was just so inappropriate. Oh, no, oh, gosh. Oh, no, 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 I'm inviting him to my party. You know, because at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's... <laughs> You know, and 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 I will, I will, I will have patience. No, no, no. Let me not use that word. I will have patience because it sounds condescending. I fully understand the struggle that white people have to sit at the center in order to do that, because it means you have to be ostracized. You will be ostracized. Explain. You will be ostracized. Yeah, you will be ostracized by your own community. You know what I mean? You'll be called woke. You'll be called all these other things that, you know, you know, that and, and the lazy um, terminologies that have been used, you know, in, in order to avoid scrutiny. Because that's all these terminologies do. They just avoid scrutiny. So if you're in the workplace, yeah, you are experiencing it. It's not in your head, you know. Now, you know, there's the whole idea of racial battle fatigue, <laughs> you know. We can't go dying on every hill and we can't go looking for every infraction. You know, I am conscious of the fact, like I live here in Australia. Mm. Yeah, I live here in Australia. And this is an extremely racist country. Mm. They just don't understand how racist it is. Yeah. Because Australians refuse to do any type of serious self-reflective work. Mm. so it is baked into everywhere australians feel well look we apologize to the um to yeah. the aboriginal people yeah. for stolen generation yeah. we apologize for that you know we give them money in grants yeah we're good we're now multiracial. Yeah. but you come into the schools you know you come into the communities you'll realize so there are friends that i have made that are very close friends yeah. close friend and the reason why they've been able to become close friends of mine is because when we were in conversations in which um a racial microaggression would have come up you know or they were starting down the road that would have ended in a that would have ended in a in me being racialized or ended in a role ended in a way of them using i could see the microaggression coming you know <laughs> i could see the racial slur coming and so i'd stop them before they actually went down the road i said look look, look stop 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 you know and i said because in the end you're gonna say this 
but I don't think you understand how racist that is. And I'm going to explain to you why that is racist. And I've done it to some of my Australian friends and they have literally gone into shock. Like, oh my gosh, you know, obviously it's expletives that they use, but I'm not going to use expletives here. Like, Ed, Eddie, I've been believing that all my life. I've been thinking that all my life. But because it's never dealt with, because it's never addressed, because it's never engaged with, they've just taken it like it was, yeah. you know. Like for instance, now the 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 um, the Greek community call themselves Wogs, yeah. Call themselves the what? Lebanese, Wogs. Wogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W o g s. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The the South. Um, the the like South, um, the Central American, Colombia, and that lot. They'll use the words "wog" to describe themselves. So a friend of mine, you know, we and and we remain friends. You know, he said, "Yeah, like, like you know, wogs. Like we're all wogs together, aren't we?" I said, "Yo, yo, yo, brethren, brethren. Like, no, 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 no. Don't use that word around me. Don't use it. Don't. You can't use it around me. When you say the word wog, I hear the N word." Because yeah. I'm from England. Yeah. I'm I'm from England and England, you no, know, that is a specific type of racism. And he's like, what? I said, but this is the question I asked him. I said, look, you came from Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your family's from the Middle East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your family is um from Colombia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, when your family lived in Greece and yours in Colombia and yours like lived in in the middle east did they call themselves culturally did they call themselves wogs where they came from and they're like no i said oh oh so when you got here you were called a wog yeah and yeah it's something that you were called once you landed here and they're like yeah i said well then you understand what that is that is a terminology that others you yeah because <laughs> The 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 uh, the Australian immigration system, the White Australia policy, that went from nineteen um nineteen oh nineteen hundred and one to about um nineteen seventy three, about seventy five, it was locked locked out officially. Um, the Australia policy, when they say White Australia policy, they were so specific that if you came from Central America, and if you came from um, the Middle East and if you came from Greece they would not even take the darker skin olive people no you had to be white presenting in order to get into Australia that's how specific the white Australia policy was yeah. you had to be white presenting in order to get into it so I said what that was was a form of saying yeah you look like us but you ain't us going back to that hierarchy again yeah. <laughs> we're going back to that hierarchy again of who is human and who is and human. and and the system that we construct to uh, to a set of goggles yeah our vision isn't immediately fixed or, or repaired or corrected no. the moment no. we take off our glasses so systemic racism whilst there will be i will be surrounded by people who believe that they are not racist. And I'm not saying they are or are not. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the system. The system that surrounds you is. Yeah. And, and yeah, while you may not, while, you know, I have friends who I know are not racist. Yeah. What, white friends? That, that, white friends, white friends, they're here. And I know that they're not racist, yeah. But that does not stop them benefiting from the privilege that systemic racism <laughs> offers them as a white person, mm. you know. But what it is, they say, like, well, what do I do with it? What do I do with what I know, you know? Because I feel so guilty. I'm like, we don't want you to feel guilty. We want you to feel enlightened. Let's That's talk about. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. That part of the solution now. Well, the solution is this. The solution is. The solution is this. And I always say, you know, look, none of us as black people, white people, whatever, none of us were born or existed when the construct, when the lie of race, yeah, 
and the construct of racism was created. We weren't here. We were just born into a world in which it existed. Yeah. Yeah. And we were separated and we were defined. Our humanity was defined. Our bounds was defined. How far we could go is defined. Yeah. We had no part in its construction. We had no part in its creation. But now that we know what it is, now that we know that it exists, now that we know how it works, we have responsibility to its deconstruction. Yeah, I think the first thing anybody could do, yeah, um, if, if, if you really want to understand, I think everybody could read this book. Yeah, How to Be, a, how to be Anti-Racist by Ibrahim X. Kendi. Okay. Yeah, it's literally the text. It is literally the text. From here, you can branch out, you know what I mean? But if you really want to understand what it is, how it works, you know what I mean? And how it is baked into the way in which you live and the way in which you think. Um, yeah, start there. Yeah, start there, you know? And, and you do the work. Don't ask black people to do your work for you. Ask them, what, sh what direction should I walk in? You know what I mean? Ask them, what direction should I walk in? You know, ask them, you know, if, the, if they themselves are conscious and if they themselves are not playing the proximity game, if they themselves are not dismissing it in order to, you know, as one, 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 uh, one student I heard say, here, and it broke my heart when I heard her say it, Kurt. It'll probably break your heart when you hear me say it too. Okay. She said, I think just, you know, when we think about race, it was over a Zoom. I think, you know, we we I think we just make too much out of it. I think like, you know, if we can just think about how we are and how we act to make ourselves more palatable to white people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm saying it now when I feel like Oh, that, that, break. that. That is yeah. a oh, you know, and she's a young, she's like a young 1890. That, that that is that is um I just have to touch on this a second. I mean, do you know something? Ed, honestly, when I was a lot younger, mm. that, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. But then growing up in a community and society that would accept the labels all the stereotypes yeah it's true i have my own people telling me it's true by saying nothing i have my grandparents pandering You're to be accepted because that was their that was their survival mechanism but it couldn't be mine yeah 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 but that was me yeah i it, it's 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 um that's real it's it's a constant thing i i, I mean the way what the way in which Racism works systemically. Mm. White people, you know, in schools, white teachers, yeah, in England, in, 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 in Australia, white teachers are not aware yeah. that when black children are racialized, they have to actually sit down and think about which teacher they are going to go and tell. They can't just grab the nearest teacher to them. Mm. They have to literally now. Nah, well, if I tell Mister, if I tell Mister Jenkins, like, no, 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 no. Should, should I? And if and if they don't know a teacher that they can tell, yeah. Until in the end, they're just like, oh, like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is 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 Mister Kendall in today? No. That's all right, just leave. Yep. Yeah. That's deep. They have to think about the way in which they have to present it in a way so that white teachers don't feel uncomfortable about their trauma. So let me tell the story. You see, we're going down the road now and you're gonna start making me get emotional. And I didn't wanna do that. You know, I'm so glad your wife is not here. Yeah. She's right there. So 2020. <laughs> you know it'd be over. <laughs> yeah. You know it'd be over. 
So 2020, I was invited into my daughter's high school to speak with the students about systemic racism and white supremacy. It was in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. Yeah. I did the first workshop. The first one I did as a small workshop. The second one, they brought me back for the whole school. The whole school. You know what I mean? When the talk was over, um, I was approached by one of the head teachers. And I had asked, so how are the discussions on racism and, you know, going amongst the teachers and stuff? And the reason why I asked for two reasons. Number one, because I wanted to know how are you progressing with it in the school? Number two, because online I was doing a lot of workshops. <laughs> I mean, and I was like, oh, you know, the school's still open. Maybe I can get some, I can get some work here. You know what I mean? You know, help them, help guide them with the conversation. So her first reply to um, my question was, well, you know, we're, we're encouraging the students to read and be informed. So obviously my reply was, my response to that was, well, that's good, that's good, but this is a school. So the emphasis cannot be on the students to inform themselves. What work is being done amongst the teachers in order to, um, yeah. What, what's, what, yeah, how are the discussions going amongst the teachers? Her reply was, well, you know, we're, we're trying to find ways of discussing it in ways that people don't feel uncomfortable. Talking about herself. Uh, well, you know, about and herself. she said it in such a way that she was expecting me to comfort her and say, Oh, oh no, 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 I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Talking I about said, herself. Well, you know, there ain't no there ain't no comfortable way to have an uncomfortable conversation. But it can be had with professionalism and understanding and, and empathy and a commitment to change. But there's no way of mitigating the discomfort. And that's what actually brought me to this PhD, you know, because yeah, and I wrote about it in my positionality when, when I wrote my um, research proposal. In my positionality, I said, my first response was as a Black parent, but it was in my head. Because still I had to play in that, in, in that instant, I still had to think about her feelings. Oh, you know what, I'm thinking about that now, and it's breaking my own heart. In that instant, my reply to her, I had to think about replying in a way so that she didn't feel uncomfortable. This is what in my head, in my head, my response as a black parent was, hold on, did this white woman just look at me and tell me that she can't discuss it because her white staff feel uncomfortable? And then the professional in me, the professional in me, yeah. started going through a whole set of questions like, yeah. hold on, did she just understand that she just said to me that we will not fulfill our duty of care to your children because we feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Did she just understand that she said that she's admitting to me that any kids of color in this school are not safe when it comes to the discussion of racialization because we feel uncomfortable. You know, did she realize that she is abdicating as the head of school her responsibility to carry her staff through these difficult conversations and uncomfortable conversations, you know? And so... But, but th th this is why I'm asking you now, back to the yeah. original question. Yeah. Is it in my head? No, it's not in my head. No, it's not in let, your let, head. Let, 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 let me your ask the face. Let, it's let in me your face. Let me, ask this, let me ask the question again in this way. Yeah. Is the racism or the race-based discrimination that I believe I'm experiencing, is it in my head? No, it is not. It is not. It is, it's actually, you're experiencing it in your, your you, you, what you are doing is experiencing it in um, your, your, your lived experience. You're experiencing what it is. That's what it is. You're experiencing its reality. Now, this is the deeper thing. Yeah. She said that to me as that head teacher with such a level of comfort. Yeah. That I realized 
that she doesn't understand how racism works. And that was, that there is the problem. Not that I keep experiencing it. You don't understand how it works and you keep on perpetuating it. And if you were willing to have the uncomfortable conversation, you know, if you were willing to have that uncomfortable conversation, because, you know, and, and, and I say it to teachers and I say it to leaders all the time. Yeah. There is no mitigating the discomfort of growth. All the growth you want, all the yeah. um, development you want, all the experience you want to gain is on the other side of all of this discomfort. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the other side of it. And so there is no way around it. Yeah. You know, it's there's no way around it. You will either go through it or go over it, or you'll just remain where you are. You know what I mean? And so, no, what you're experiencing is not in your head. It is, you are actually experiencing it as it works. You're experiencing it um, as it is. I, I, I want to close on, on making a request. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm soon going to host a session with international social workers. So a lot, we have a, a lot of movement here, um, a high influx of South African uh, countries, including South Africa, um, and South African social workers come in here. It's a different world. And with the system of, of racism that is still in place in people's conscious and subconscious in the society and in the workplace, their journey is different and it's heavy. Um, and they've come to England. So I'll be hosting that session soon. And I, I want you to give a word to of encouragement or guidance, advice, whatever you think. Uh, let me put it like this. <laughs> uh, you know, I have some allies as a black man from everyone, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i i i would rather they'll see myself as an advocate because i'm a, i for the most part i can stand now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i can stand as a black man mm -hmm. um maybe not necessarily upright a hundred percent um but i want to I, I i don't need that word i want the word for people who haven't even had a moment to address, I'm talking about black people, haven't had a moment to even understand racism, but live the results of it, just like my grandparents did. I want you to speak to them, you know, in, in how to stand. Mm -hmm. They've come to this country, they've come to your country, how do, how would you like to speak to them about how to stand in, of it's 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 interesting doing this work in terms of my research yeah and watching um helen simon and cass the other three researchers watching them experience racism up front wow <laughs> Yeah, they've read about it, you know, they, they came from colonial Africa, you know, um, parts war-torn Africa. Um, but they've come here and now they've experienced it. And it's interesting, you know, all of them are younger than me, you know, you know my old man. And, um, but they're all, all of them are parents. All of them are married, you know what I mean? And watching them go through 
the microaggressions, the blatant, mm. just blatant in your face racism, mm. you know, the passive aggressive racism, you know, the other, oh, is it me? Is it, oh, yeah. is it, is it me? Or, or is it, I'm, I don't know, am I reading too much into this? Right. <laughs> type of, you know, watching them go through that. We have a group uh, within our, um, 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 our research group that we meet every two weeks. Uh, but, but we have a WhatsApp group and there's, it, it's really, there's beautiful synergy amongst us. And I always say to them, and I'm saying it to those of you who are listening, you came from where you came with your humanity. You came with a deepened sense of who you are, of the stories that have defined who you are, of the history that has defined who you are, of the struggle that has defined who you are. You've come um, with that, and that has formed that has formed your protective shell. That has formed your solid foundation. You know, you you do not walk into a space on your own, even though you're physically here working in this space, um, as it were, on your own. You you come with a history of family and, and of culture and of language and of story and of music and of literature. Systemic racism, as it works systemically, is designed for you to feel dehumanized. That's what it is designed to do. So that you will always feel that you do not have a right to be at the center of where you are. You do not have a right to ascend as far as your dreams are taking you, as far as your skill actually demands that you should go, as far as your knowledge and your understanding of the world affirms that, you know, you should be placed at, you know. It, systemic racism is designed, you know, as a, and I call it how it works, just like colonialism, systemic racism is extractive and distractive. <laughs> it distracts you from who you actually are and it extracts from you everything that is important to you for itself. And you cannot allow it to do that. Once you understand how it operates, you have to find communities. We call our, ours, is, would be defined as a maroon community, you know what I mean? A professional maroon community. A, a, ours is an academic maroon community of like-minded, like-skilled, you know what I mean? Of, of like-intentioned, of like-professionalism, um, of like-brilliance, of, of like-beauty, you know, of like-humanity. Because it's not just about finding black spaces like that. It's about finding human spaces like that. That is aware of this struggle. Yeah, but doesn't allow the struggle to define what our humanity is. So don't allow it to dehumanize you. That's what it's set up to do. It's set up to dehumanize you so that it can distract you from who you are and where you've been and what, who you really represent in order to extract from you. So, yeah, find that community. Find a community that grounds. Find a community that um, affirms. Find a community that reminds you that it's not all in your head. <laughs> yeah, you, you aren't crazy. It's not all in your head. Um, and, and, and then that community that propels you beyond that that pro propels you beyond that yeah. um, so that you are operating in, in your full self, the full self that you came with, yeah. the full self that you landed with, the full self that you came from yeah. so that that isn't lost when now that you're, as it were, in a strange land, you know, and in a new place. Yeah. So that, that, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's what I would say. No, listen, I appreciate it. We can't help but go go deep and I'm holding back. Um, <laughs> but 
Thank you. Well, um, I hope some of it made sense, man. I hope some of it made sense. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll find out from the comments. We'll uh, out. You know, and I'm really, I've got a heart for people who are marginalized, but mm. still have to put on a smile, you know? Oh, man. Um, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I appreciate your word and I, 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 I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to host it. This is a different event from what I told you about it. But it's, it, it, when I say event, it's just an online thing where I want to pull the international social workers together because I hear from them mm. in, my, in my messages and, it, and, it, and I work with them and I've worked with them for a good few years now. And mm. they're not just doing their jobs. They are carrying more bags than people can see. And so um, this was a, a powerful discussion. I hope it makes sense to some. And I thank you for your time. And oh, for me, it's pleasure. bedtime. And for you, it's, the day's just begun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Morning the, time. Yeah. What's the time? Whole, a whole day ahead of me, man. man nearly yeah. midnight. Look at that. It's 20 for past, 20, it's 20, 25 past 11 where you are, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's 25 past 10 the next day. It's 25 past, long time past my bedtime. That's what it is. Long time past, yeah. But I appreciate you, man. And say hello to family. Yeah, man. And yeah, say hi for me too. Love you, brother. Thank you, likewise. And people, listen, subscribe. Ed, before we go, actually, I forgot. Where are we finding you? Um, I am just Eddie Hippolyte. Um, everywhere that I am on social media. Um, you, you can, you can um, find out. You can find me at my website, which is um, eyrltd.com. Um, you'll put it in the um, you'll put it in the in the bio, um, and then um, I'm on uh, I'm I'm on Insta, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, I'm on LinkedIn, Threads, X, Twitter. You know, what I, mean? I have to come off of that, man. I can't I can't be on that again. You know, but anyway, that's a different. That's a different. Different discussion, man. Come off for all of them, but no, that's a different discussion. But yeah, you can just find me as Eddie Hippolyte on any of those in any of those spaces. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Social Work Race podcast. We went heavy. That's all we can do. Um, take care of yourselves. How do I stop this recording now? Let me click stop. Lovely.